The Septuagint, a revered Greek translation of the Old Testament, features the enigmatic presence of Gog in a significant verse. In a vision, the Lord reveals a swarm of locusts approaching, and among them was Gog, the king, a young and destructive locust. Amos chapter 7. The scripture in question is especially fascinating because it delves into the world of actual locust insects, which are unique in that they do not have a hierarchical structure. This absence is noted in Proverbs chapter 30 verse 27, which wisely notes that locusts do not recognize a single authority figure. Therefore, the mention of Gog as a powerful ruler among the locust has supernatural implication, maybe representing a formidable demonic connection, a fallen angel ready to rule the forces of evil as Gog and Magog the prophecies of Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. The plausibility of this idea is enhanced when considering the imagery presented in the book of Revelation. When the return of Gog is shown in Revelation chapter 20, occurring 1,000 years after he is first mentioned. Within the context of this uncertain future, a disconcerting prospect arises, whereby the wicked entity known as Gog will potentially inhabit another vessels at the duration of 1,000 years. This would enable Gog to meticulously plan and execute a series of attacks against Israel and the city of Jerusalem on two occasions in biblical history. According to the prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 39, the physical body of the first human leader serves as a conduit for the unyielding malevolence of Gog beyond the limitations of human mortality. The pages of Revelation extend further mysteries, revealing a horrifying spectacle, a swarm of demonic locusts emerging from the abyss. During the harrowing fifth trumpet judgment, as relayed in Revelation chapter 9, within the context of these hostile armies, the commanding angelic being known as Abaddon, often referred to as the Destroyer, assumes the role of a sovereign ruler, as mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 9. They have as king over them the angel of the abyss, the bottomless pit, in Hebrew, his name is Abaddon, destruction, and in Greek he is called Apollyon, the destroyer king. This raises an interesting question. Is it possible that Abaddon can be used in place of Gog, or perhaps as the evil figurehead controlling Gog? As the seven-year tribulation, or 70 weeks, approaches its dramatic culmination, a foreboding prophecy emerges, suggesting that a forthcoming leader would get entangled in the grasp of the malicious entity known as Gog thereby becoming a method for its wicked intentions. This entity, believed to be under the influence of Gog's demonic essence, will gather together a coalition, consisting of both demonic entities and Islamic forces, deriving power from a diverse range of Middle Eastern countries. The powerful alliance originating from a northern country, known as Gog and Magog, is predicted to descend against the holy borders of Israel, as mentioned in the biblical passage of Ezekiel chapter 38. However, in light of this grave assault, it is believed that divine justice will ultimately triumph. Christians believe that God, in the person of Jesus, the King of Kings, will impose a severe punishment on Gog and all who are allied with him, marking the culmination of this apocalyptic episode, Ezekiel chapter 38. In conclusion, the focus was on the examination of Gog, a hostile creature depicted in the Septuagint and Revelation. The narrative used the symbolism of locusts to propose the notion that Gog, a dangerous entity, perhaps embodies characteristics of a demonic being or a fallen angel. God punishes Gog and his unholy alliances, signaling the terrible end of the final conflict between good and evil. It is clear that God had a steadfast plan, one that will exalt his son and everyone who chooses to accept him as savior. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe to Grace to Prophecy Network.